and also training for lactate threshold or your functional threshold power improvement. So firstly, VO2 max, and they, they sort of go hand in hand, but VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen we can take in, transport, and utilize in a minute. So it's how much we can breathe in by the lungs, transport by the heart and cardiovascular system, and then use by the muscles to create aerobic energy. Now aerobic energy is really, really good because we get lots of energy from it. We get 36 to 38 energy molecules called ATP, compared to only getting two energy molecules for the anaerobic system. So we get lots of energy. We also get non-fatiguing metabolic byproducts. We get heat, water, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, we just breathe back out there, that's fine. Water's created and absorbed by the body, so that's good. And heat's okay, so long as we can control it through sweating, hydration, use of fans, and all the rest. Heat will cause fatigue eventually. Pretty good at tolerating it though, uh, when, it's, when it's not a, a ridiculously warm environment. When we get to an intensity where we can't get 100% of our energy from the aerobic system, we get an increased reliance on the anaerobic system. Now the anaerobic system, it gives us energy very, very quickly, think of your sprinting events, but it only gives us two energy molecules instead of that 36, so we get about 18 times less energy, and we get lactic acid as our byproduct. Now lactic acid is what causes the fatigue in the legs and the arms, okay? So basically, long story short, uh, we have these things in the muscles called mitochondria, and the mitochondria, their job is to get the oxygen from the bloodstream that we've breathed in and circulated, get it from the blood into the muscles, into the mitochondria, okay, to create aerobic energy. When we have lactic acid present in the muscles and the blood, we inhibit and, and make these mitochondria less efficient, okay? So they don't create as much energy, we therefore fatigue and have to slow down. So VO2 max is our key performance indicator for endurance events. Higher that number, the longer, harder, faster we can go just using that aerobic system before we have to start using that anaerobic system as well, which causes fatigue and makes us slow down. So your VO2 max is, is the overall size of your engine, okay? So it's usually measured in, we're gonna do a video on it, but it's usually measured in, in mils per kilo per minute or something like that. So let's say that it's, it's your, this is your, your overall aerobic engine, your overall base. So the whole goal of your base training is to improve that, that VO2 max. So this is your engine, right? Let's say we're in a V6 engine. Our V6 engine is now working on three cylinders. Now, how many cylinders you're working on, that's all to do with your functional threshold. So nobody can hold 100% VO2 max for very long. Uh, probably about five minutes, about that top end that you can hold it for above 100%. But what we can do is hold functional threshold for 45 to 60 minutes or even a little bit longer. So your functional threshold is the proportion of your VO2 max that you can actually use for a long time. The average person hits their threshold at 70% of their VO2 max Okay, so for example, a V6 engine working on four cylinders, uh, the elite guys can hold 88 to 94% of their VO2 max, so a large proportion of that. To improve your VO2 max, what we're doing, with the goal is to go from a V6 to a V8 engine. I'm right? gonna build the engine, build out the amount of oxygen that we can actually use. The way we do that, long, slow distance training, so your volume stuff, in the absence of lactic acid, because we don't want that lactic acid in the system because it's inhibiting those mitochondria. The other way, VO2 max intervals, two to four minute efforts at 95% of your VO2 max pace. So if you did a VO2 max test and you got to 330 pace, 95% of that is about 341. Uh, so that's the pace you wanna hold for two to four minutes with identical rest. Identical rest because lactic acid's coming in, but by having that same rest, so three on, three off, we get rid of most of that lactic acid, mitochondria function and fire again, we improve our VO2 max that way, okay? To improve your threshold, so we've now got to a V8 engine, now we wanna get that V8 engine working on all eight cylinders instead of just working on three or four. That's your functional threshold. So the way we do that, we wanna flood the muscles full of lactic acid so we become better at tolerating and clearing lactic acid. Two ways we do it, one is threshold work. So you, you now are exercising and training in the, in, the, um, in the presence of lactic acid. So things like doing uh, five minutes hard, two and a half off, 10 on, five off. It's sort of a two to one work to rest ratio, even a, a three to one. So you're doing more work than you are rest. So you've got lactic acid coming in, but then you, get a, you only have half the rest, so you get a partial recovery and go again, partial recovery. Always in the system, your body becomes better at tolerating and clearing it. You get that 70% of threshold right up to that 88 to 94% like the elites are, uh, and you can maximize the proportion of that engine that you can use. So that was just a quick overview on, on training to improve VO2 max and threshold. The goal is let's build that engine from a V6 to a V8 
and then get that V8 working on all eight cylinders and you've maximized your, your physiological potential there. Put your questions below. We'll link some videos that explain that in a bit more detail if you want more information. But yeah, put your questions below and speak to you again soon. Guys, if you like this video, please comment any questions below and get involved in our Mets Mastermind group. We're going to post the link below, but it's a free group where we post every bit of content that we create, whether it's a video, um, an article, a blog, something that we find uh, in the endurance industry. We put it all in there and you can actually ask questions about anything related to endurance performance. It's completely free. Click the link below, get involved.